Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. Not every musician gets to go down in history as a pioneer of the genre of music, but Toots Hibbert does. He may not have been as high profile as Bob Marley, but Toots and his band The Maytals were absolutely key players in the development of reggae. Sadly, on September 11, 2020, Toots died at the age of 77. His cause of death wasn't made public, but Hibbert was hospitalized for suspected COVID-19 on September 2, 2020. The results of his tests were unannounced. My name is Ras Dennis, and I welcome you to yet another video by Reggae Just Extra. Reggae Just Extra's Toots and the Maytals Edition. Frederick Toots Hibbert, the frontman of the reggae group, Toots and the Maytals Band, is our focus in this episode. The 1968 single Do the Reggae was the first song to use the word reggae, coining the name of the genre and introducing it to a global audience. You might be wondering how he got his nickname, Toots. As reggae. Stay tuned to that's find out. the first out. reggae song and that's the first name ever come around, which I never knew it would be like what it is today. So I'm the inventor for the word reggae. Frederick Nathaniel Hibbert was born in Jamaica in 1942. Hibbert's parents were preachers, and he was raised singing gospel in what he calls a salvation church. The hand-clapping, foot-stomping, and soul-shaking vocals associated with Jamaica's Afro-Christian religious traditions, including Revival Zion and Pacamania, were essential in shaping Hibbert's performances. Hibbert also cites Elvis Presley, gospel icon Mahalia Jackson, and soul superstars James Brown, Wilson Pickett, and Otis Redding as influences. He became an orphan at 11 years old. In his early teens, Hibbert moved to Trench Town, an economically poor yet musically thriving community in Western Kingston, also home to future reggae artists including Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, and Bob Marley, who became the Whalers. The nickname Toots, rhymes with Newts, came from his older brother calling him Tuts when they were kids. While working as a barber, Hibbert met Nathaniel Jerry Mathias and Henry Raleigh Gordon and they formed the Maytals Vocal Trio, circa 1961, at the dawn of Jamaica's ska era. Mathias and Gordon had previously cut a single together and they knew Hibbert's powerful voice would enhance their sound. The Maytals went on to release numerous singles for the top Jamaican producers of the 1960s. They signed with Clement Sir Coxon Dodge Studio One label in 1962, releasing such ska gems as Hallelujah, Fever, and the exceptional Six and Seven Books of Moses, featuring Hibbert's galvanizing gospel delivery. Studio One was regarded as Jamaica's Motown, home to many outstanding young singing, songwriting, and instrumental talents, including The Wailers, Bob Andy, The Heptons, Marsha Griffiths, and Jackie Mitu. The Maytals, however, were dissatisfied with Dodd's payments and moved on. They recorded The Rollicking Dog War, which alludes to leaving Dodd and working instead with his rival Prince Buster. They made history with producer and band leader Byron Lee when the joyous ska romp at you and its B-side, the R&B ballad Daddy, both topped the Jamaica charts. In August 1966, The Maytals Bam Bam, also produced by Lee, won the inaugural Jamaica Festival Song Competition, held annually to coincide with the island's Independence Day celebrations. The chorus of Bam Bam was featured in Sister Nancy's 1982 song of the same name. Hibbert was arrested shortly after the Maytals' victory and sentenced to 18 months for possession of marijuana. He described the incident as political, a means to keep me down. At the time of Hibbert's release from jail, the jaunty ska beat created in Kingston Studios had slowed down and morphed into Rocksteady. The reunited Maytals began recording for producer Leslie Kong, their first release 54 to 46, That's My Number, which Toots wrote about his prison sentence, became the Maytals' biggest hit of that era and had remained a staple in Hibbert's live shows. Kong's other productions with the Maytals include Monkey Man, which broke through to the UK singles charts, and Do the Reggae, which became the first song to brand the beat that followed Rocksteady, which is Jamaica's most successful musical export. When asked about the origins of the word reggae, shortly thereafter spelled reggae, Toots offered, Strege was a slang word in Jamaica, 
It meant something that looked raggedy, scruffy so one day I was talking with Raleigh and Jerry and just changed the word to reggae and said, let's make music, let's do the reggae. Two Maytals tracks produced by Calm, Pressure Drop, about tough conditions in Jamaica, and Sweet and Dandy, an engaging tale of a rural wedding, were included on the Island Records soundtrack to the 1972 landmark film The Harder They Come, which introduced reggae to America. In the film, directed by Perry Henzel, the Maytals are seen recording Sweet and Dandy, the 1969 Jamaica Festival Song Contest winner, while the film's lead character, aspiring singer Ivan O. Martin, portrayed by Jimmy Cliff, watches mesmerized. Reggae just extras toots in the Maytals edition. This is the place to be for your reggae gist, facts, and culture. Chris Blackwell signed the Maytals to Island Records and changed their name to Toots and the Maytals, with Maytals now referring to the backing singers and the band members. Just like what he did to the trio, Bob Marley, Bunny Whaler, and Peter Tosh. Toots and the Maytals released several influential albums for the label, including Funky Kingston, 1975, Reggae Got Soul, 1976, and, following the departure of Matthias and Gordon, Hibbert's solo album Toots in Memphis, 1988. The latter, accompanied by Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare, aka the historic rhythm section Sly and Robbie, was critically acclaimed and earned Hibbert his first Grammy nomination. Later in life, Hibbert won the 2005 Grammy for Best Reggae Album for True Love. Each song on the record was a collaboration with some of his biggest fans, among them Eric Clapton, Bootsy Collins and The Roots, Willie Nelson, Keith Richards and Jamaican great Shaggy, Marsha Griffiths and Ken Booth. Bonnie Raitt, who's featured on the title track, True Love is Hard to Find, said performing with Toots and his band is one of the highlights of my life. On August 28, 2020, Hibbert released the final album of his career and his first new studio album in a decade, the aptly titled Got To Be Tough. On the album, an impassioned Hibbert addresses global atrocities on the soul jam just brutal, overcoming obstacles on the funk-infused struggle, combating dirty principles with decency on the scorching warning warning and staying resilient, irrespective of the circumstances on the indomitable title track. Two days after the release of Got To Be Tough, Hibbert was admitted to Kingston's University Hospital of the West Indies. On September 11, 2020, Toots Hibbert died at the age of 77. Following his death in 2020, there was uncertainty as to if the Maytals would return. On November 2020, Paul Douglas and Jackie Jackson confirmed that the band would carry on as a tribute to Hibbert. On March 14th, 2021 at the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards, Toots and the Maytals won Best Reggae Album for the album Got To Be Tough. On July 2021, the family of Toots Hibbert issued a cease and desist letter to the members of the Maytals band. The letter sought to prohibit the remaining band members from performing under the name The Maytals, the name the band has been performing under for over 50 years. Subsequently, a Toots Hibbert tribute concert where multiple artists including UB40 were scheduled to perform in London on September 4, 2021 was cancelled as a result of the cease and desist letter. Following a settlement, which was reached on December 8, 2021, the estate retained full ownership of the Maytals name and trademark and announced Liba Hibbert as the lead singer. Now, do you think it was right for the family of Toots Hibbert to issue the cease and desist letter to the old band? Please, post your comment in the comment section below and do remember to hit the subscription button, like and share this video and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.
Oh, <laughs> oh,